Hi everyone, I would like to talk to you about a very, very inspiring and fascinating video I watched yesterday on YouTube. I will link you to it in the description, and I hope that you will all watch it. It is very eye-opening and very beautiful. I've been struggling on this channel to put into words what Stephen Axford explains. He is a specialist in nature photography with a particular passion for macro fungi photography. And in this video, he talks about how fungi have changed his view of the world. They've changed his view of the world in a way similar to how my view of the world has changed since becoming more knowledgeable and learning more about the wonders of the natural world. A major challenge for me on this channel is to get people to understand what nature is. So few people have an understanding of what the natural world is and just how amazing and awe-inspiring it is. And, and this is something I would love to communicate to you and, and get you to understand because if you could understand how amazing it is, I believe that you would wish to protect it. So I'm going to quote Stephen Axford here. He said, quote, Life is such a wonderful thing, and we know so little about almost all of it. I used to work as a computer software engineer on very large computer systems, and systems that we think of as being very complex. But a computer system is designed by humans, and get enough of us together, and we can explain everything about them. But even the smallest system in the natural world is more complex than the largest computer system. And then, when you consider that there are trillions or even quadrillions of organisms on the planet, we start to get a sense of just how complex life on Earth really is. I started on this journey knowing a little about photography, but very little about the natural world. Learning about the complexity of fungi, or fungi, he says fungi, uh, I've heard it pronounced as fungi. Learning about the complexity of fungi, and through it, the complexity of life. I realize now that life on this planet is more interconnected than I ever could have imagined. We are just one organism in that story, and yet we have the means to destroy it all, including ourselves, because we cannot survive on our own. With all the extraordinary tools we have created, humans have a wonderful opportunity to learn and conserve." End quote. I have made videos explaining how dogs and cats are not part of the natural world. There is no ecosystem on Earth in which dogs or cats belong. And once you can understand just how complex the relationships are between the organisms that live within an ecosystem, just how amazingly interconnected they all are with each other and how they maintain such a delicate balance, a delicate and perfect balance, you will understand how much of a threat dogs and cats are to these ecosystems. Dogs and cats are removed from the circle of life. They are man-made. They were selectively bred by humans. They did not evolve naturally over the course of millions of years through a process of natural selection to occupy an ecological niche and exist in harmony with the other organisms that inhabit their ecosystem, like natural, wild organisms have. Dogs and cats are not natural. They are not a part of the natural world. They are removed from the natural world. And as such, they threaten the natural world. Dogs have contributed to the extinction of a dozen animal species. Cats have contributed to the extinction of 63 animal species. And they threaten hundreds more. They have no place in the natural world. They are a threat to natural animals. I 
repeat this in my videos over and over, and yet I wonder if people truly understand. Maybe this video will help people understand. There is so much diversity and wonder in the natural world. And all that dog lovers see and care about are dogs, as if dogs were the apex of natural accomplishment. These very dog owners prevent the rest of us looking for and enjoying natural delights, such as fungi. I rarely go into the forest anymore, and when I do, I'm always looking out for dog shit or anticipating the moment when someone with a dog will spoil it for us. I wonder why dog and cat worshippers cannot appreciate the wonderful beauty, diversity, and interconnectedness that exist in the natural world. I looked up how many species of fungi live in North America. It is estimated that there are at least 10,000 species in North America alone. In the UK, it's an unbelievable 15,000. Each species of fungi, plant, animal, plays a crucial role in its ecosystem. It depends upon other species for survival. Other species depend upon it for survival. A miraculous balance is maintained in the natural world, which we are not even close to understanding. It fills me with awe and wonder. Do dog and cat worshippers not see the beauty that is right in front of them? It seems all they can appreciate are their dogs and cats. Hunting for mushrooms, like many outdoor activities, is something that you are allowed to do between dog intrusions. When I was younger, I used to enjoy the forest. It was magical. It's not that way for me anymore because dogs and their owners are ruining the experience. Back in the 70s and 80s, fewer people owned dogs, but today our forests are infested with dogs. I hope that you will watch this video. I hope that it will help you appreciate the natural world so that you can gain the same sense of wonder and appreciation for the natural world that I have. The future is pet free.